Hi, it's Desmond Taylor from The Real Progressives, and I got a problem. I got two problems. My first problem is police brutality as a whole, and my second problem is we are not talking about police brutality. There has been cases among cases of police brutality, yet we're still not talking about the actual issue. Colin Kaepernick had a protest. But we're still not talking about the issue. We're talking about Colin Kaepernick kneeling. The president has said that there's a problem with police brutality, but we're still not talking about police brutality. Judges have said that there's a problem with police brutality, yet we're still not talking about police brutality for some reason after judges and lawyers and everyone has talked about police brutality. It makes no sense to me. Why are we avoiding the subject? Why are we hopping from killing to killing to everything that may have happened, but still not actually talking about the case of police brutality, using excessive or unnecessary force? We could talk about this, and we could talk about that, but we're not talking about police brutality, and that is something that we have to talk about right now. Now, if things are going to change, we have to talk about it right now. We can't let the conversation lead off to race. We can't let the conversation lead off to anything else except police brutality. 1,000, over 1,000 people were killed by the police last year, but we're still not talking about police brutality. I understand that all 1,000 people weren't victims of police brutality, but isn't the fact that 1,000 people killed by some, by one group, enough to talk about a situation that falls into that category? Well, first of all, it is the laws that make this happen. That is one of the biggest things, is laws. Well, talk is cheap, but action is big, too. We gotta think about this. There are tons and tons of people that show up to police brutality rallies, and they get called thugs and everything else. Well, these people honestly aren't showing up for the case. They're showing up for what the case stands for, and that's police brutality. Most of these people don't know the circumstances of why they're showing up, but they have a passion for police brutality. That is a problem in this country. It is a huge problem in this country. Trust me, I was a victim. I'm not going to get into that right now because even my circumstance is not as big as the issue of police brutality using unnecessary force. This stems from training. We have police training like military using force on people that are civilians. The, the enemy population, that makes no sense for the American population to be the enemy population, but somehow that's the prop, that is the problem. No, it's not the problem. We got people calling these protesters thugs and hoodlums and everything else that was used as a term for African American or bad black guy back in the day, but these people aren't thugs. If anything, they're watering down the term thugs. You know what thugs do? Thugs would go there armed and shoot those people that oppose them. That's what thugs would do. These people aren't thugs. They're showing up unarmed with signs and everything else. Yes, they need extensive training because they go through a max of six to eight months of training. I'm not going to sit here and compare them to a hairdresser, but I'll tell you this. They sit around in their cars and they have books that are not canonical to the law. Something that people have to study six years to actually be able to use for other people. Not to mention they have to take a test afterwards to prove that they have enough knowledge. But they're doing that ten times less of the time. How is that fair to anyone? We need to change this right now. Police brutality is a problem. We, No matter how many people show up at protests, we still won't change it until we do something much more major and much more drastic. And there's no need for violence. There's no need for violence whatsoever. We need to start showing up to court. People need to stop dodging jury duty. We need to start putting these crappy laws and saying, you know what, these people are not guilty. That's very easy. These people are not guilty. You as a citizen, your biggest duty that you could do is show up to court and you say, you know what, I don't agree with this law. This person is not guilty. That's the easiest thing to do. But meanwhile, people will sit here on Facebook and they will type back and forth about what they think is right and what they think is wrong. But they're dodging court and jury duty where they get to actually present what is right and what is wrong. There's no reason to talk about one specific story because they all could be questionable when you're not there. But it is very important to acknowledge that there's police brutality and it needs to change. 
But meanwhile, we're getting sidetracked by conversations on on the actual circumstance of one case instead of the actual problem, which is using force that is unnecessary. We can call it the war on blacks. We can call it the war on whites. We can call it the war on whatever. But it is the war on the American population. There are many people being held down by this struggle because police officers over the law. You don't hear many stories about police officers getting in trouble because they get a free pass. Imagine getting pulled over and someone says to you, you know what? You're drunk. Just get home safe. Well, that's what happens to police officers. A regular civilian, they lose their job. They go to jail. Maybe one for one weekend, maybe for three months. No one else has to deal with that. People go to jail for this kind of shit, and it's just not right. Let's not get sidetracked by other issues such as race. I understand that predominantly when you look at it per capita, it is black people that are being systematically brutalized by police. But guess what? If we don't stop it for everyone, then it will not stop at all. Because there are people that are willing to say, well, what about my people? What about my people? I want to talk about all people when we talk about police brutality because it is a huge freaking problem. It is such a passion of mine, not only being a victim of police brutality, but seeing how it happens over and over and over again. And seeing that these people go through a system where they have their own peers judge whether they did anything wrong. Seeing that they go to a grand jury and the grand jury gets to give whatever evidence they want to give. And in the meanwhile, the people who say if these people are guilty or not should to be left off the hook, they say no. I wonder why, because they don't get enough information. Then you have internal affairs investigating the police that they're going to let off in the first place. The people that they work with in the first place. You have the judges and you have the state that don't want to lose extra money. So you know what they say? No, this person is not guilty. Some of these are blatant killings. Blatant killings. Tell me this. How do so many police officers get off on criminal charges but lose civil charges after the fact of the matter? If you're losing civil charges, you most likely did something wrong. Obama did fail, but guess what? Everyone before him failed. This is not nothing new. This is not nothing new. Trust me, this was the same battle as the Civil Rights Act. The only difference is now we're back into it, and it's and we have people that are willing to say that this law isn't right and that law isn't right, but they're going to sit there and defend the police, the foot soldiers of the law? We need to get rid of the laws themselves. If we want to stop this division among police officers and citizens, then let's get rid of the law. Let's do that. That makes sense, right? If I have weed in my pocket, but I know that I'm not going to get in trouble for it, I have no reason to run. No one has any reason to run. Police don't have the opportunity to get shot at after that. But meanwhile, we're stuck in a bunch of, of money schemes that just keep bringing money over and over and over again. And people are willing to do this because it feeds their families. Some of these police officers don't want to do it because it feeds their families. But I know police officers. I work with police officers. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them that are good. But what good are they if they're holding up laws that they don't even believe in? How am I supposed to feel bad for someone who is, who is a victim of harm for doing something that is only profiting them? They're only doing what's good for them and their family. And then after they get hurt for it, you want to feel bad for them. You know why I don't feel bad when thugs get hurt? Because they're out there doing something that only profits them and their people. What is the difference between someone upholding a law that they do not agree that they that they do not agree with and somehow they're the victims in this case? You are victimizing people and then saying that you are the victim after these people decide to defend themselves. This is supposed to be the country of the free. But there is no freedom when a high populace of people do something and it is a crime. There is no freedom when we have things like civil forfeiture and someone can take your property without it even being related to a crime and you have to fight back to get your property usually at a value that isn't even worth fighting back through the court system because the court system is rigged. Because you have lawyers that are going to pass paperwork back and forth to each other that are pretty much templates that they just need to put your name into to waste your money. 
why are these court cases continued so many times? Because these lawyers are also just as fraudulent as the judges that are in there. The public defenders are in cahoots with the DA. I've heard a DA say, you know what? We can't get them on this, but we will get them on this. Why is everyone getting the same grouping of charges? How do people receive obstructing justice charges? I'm sorry, how do people re receive charges that can only be happening out in public in their own private homes? How are people getting trespassing, trespassing charges with no complainants? That's just not realistic. These people don't know whether you're allowed on the property or not. Police officers cannot be the complainant. But somehow they are the complainant and many of these charges and the state is also the judge and that's a conflict of interest. And meanwhile, there are people that are dodging jury duty that complain about the law. We are not talking about the problem correctly. We are talking about situations that people can fight back and forth with constantly, but we're not talking about police brutality. Police brutality is the act of using force that is not necessary or malicious. So it starts at a very small scope. When someone comes up to you and grabs your arm, that's assault and battery. When a police officer does it, that's assault and battery. People have a right to defend themselves against a rogue police officer. It's something that we don't talk about, but you have the right to defend yourself and you have the right to defend others when they are being attacked by a police officer. The most things people do is they pull out their phone. And yeah, it helps because getting involved might not end up well for you because a live cop leaves a lot of lies left out. And I'm not advocating violence. I'm not saying to do anything crazy, but I am telling you that you're allowed to defend yourself. You know why they kill so many? Because a dead man can't tell stories. Well, guess what? A dead police officer can't tell stories either. I'm not saying to kill him. I'm telling you to defend yourself in these situations because what else is going to happen? These people are being victimized again and again and again and again. They're put in a system where you get in trouble for something that you never should have gotten in trouble for in the first place, and then you get violated on probation, and then you get another violation. No telling why these people want to run, because you got started with some bullshit charges. I'm not going to waste my time talking about event for event. You want to know why? Because people that truly show up to these events don't care I can't say that they don't care about the person that got victimized. They care about the issue way more. The issue of police brutality is something that they care about, and that's why they go out there, because they know that there are going to be hundreds of other people that care about police brutality. So we need to start talking about police brutality right now in the correct format and start doing the correct things to get, the, to get this off the streets, and that includes going to court. Is it if it's as a witness or if it's as a jury? You need to go there. If you don't believe in a crime, you need to get there to vote not guilty because it's very goddamn important. And I'm glad you care. And I'm glad so many people agree. So tell other people to stop sitting there fighting with other people on the computer about police brutality and actually do something about police brutality. Stop showing up to these riots and, and ruining crap so people can call you thugs. Go there, say your piece, but then spend your next day going to actually to the court system or filing paperwork saying that I saw a murder. If I see someone get murdered by the police, guess what? I'm going to the police station and I'm filling out a report saying that I, I saw a murder. That way, when, when, their jur or when their lawyer wants to look up this case, they can at least say, here's someone's statement. Because our statements on Facebook aren't good enough. We need to actually go to the system. We need to use the shitty system that we have to our advantage. My name is Desmond Taylor from The Real Progressives. If you see anything that you like on here, know that it's backed up on our YouTube. You can check out our YouTube channel. It's very important that you subscribe because Facebook censors us. Facebook pushes our data down as we put more on. It's very important that you become as close to this group as possible because we're always putting out good news. I like to thank everyone for watching and I like to thank you for caring about the issue. So please get involved.